All right, well, welcome. This is uh, just going to be a short video introducing you to uh, Calculus 2. All I want to do here is just say some very basic things about what we hope to have seen you do last semester. Um, well, actually, first order of business, we're using this book. It's uh, Calculus 1 and Several Variables by Salas Hillian uh, Edgen. Actually, I don't know how to say that last name. Oh, well. Anyway, um, that's the book. You don't have to have this exact copy of it. You just have to have some way of looking at it. I don't care if you have an ebook, whatever. Um, I will not be using the Wiley Plus stuff, so don't worry about that. Um, okay, now, um, so this is Calculus 2, which means I'm assuming you've had Calculus 1. Um, this semester we're going to do a lot of integration. Uh, we'll spend a while on sequences and series and learn lots of interesting things about parametric equations about a week or two on differential equations, that's, that's about the course. Uh, I don't want to say too much about that right now, I just want to really want to focus back on last semester. So let me, a little trip down memory lane here. So in Calculus 1 we learned about how to differentiate a function. Alright, so we have function f of x, we have its derivative f prime of x, and then you can even calculate its second derivative, right? So here's some things we should already know. If you have the power function x to the n, you get n times x to the n minus 1 for the derivative. Second derivative would be like that. All right. Natural log of x. Derivative of natural log of x would be 1 over x. If I differentiate that once more, I get minus 1 over x squared. Square root of x. Derivative of square root of x is 1 over twice the square root of x. If I differentiate that once more, I pick up a minus half power, gives me minus a half times a half, gives me minus a fourth. And then minus a half drops one more power to minus three halves. All right. Um, derivative e to the x is e to the x. The der second derivative e to the x is e to the x. This goes on. Um, sine differentiates to cosine. Cosine differentiates to minus sine. Cosine differentiates to minus sine. Minus sine differentiates back to minus cosine. It's kind of neat. Uh, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. The derivative of the cotangent is minus cosecant squared. The derivative of the cosecant is minus cosecant cotangent. The derivative of a to the x is natural log of a times a to the x. These things should all be familiar to you. Also, if you were to, say, forget how to differentiate tangent, you ought to be well aware of how to derive that right quick, right? So ddx of, you know, sine x over cosine x is what? I use the quotient rule. We'll say more about that in the next page here, but I'll just say a little bit right now. So like ddx of sine x or cosine x would be, um, let's see here, cosine of x times cosine of x minus sine of x times minus sine of x divided by cosine of x quantity squared. All right, so at the top we got cosine squared plus sine squared, which is giving me 1. So I got 1 divided by cosine of x, and then I can say, oh, it's the whole thing squared, right? So that's really um, secant squared, right? And this, of course, was the derivative of tangent. Sorry, bad notation, don't worry. You can take off points from this, I, I, should, I probably would. Well, I don't know, at least it's got it equals. We certainly shouldn't write floating equations. But anyway, I'll be showing you lots of proper notation in every lecture. So let's not dwell on that too much right now. Um, anyway, my point is some of these are basic. Some of these can be derived from, say, quotient rule. All right. But anyway, the larger point here is you must know these. Uh, here's some the second derivatives. That's really just kind of for fun. But you really should be able to figure these out without like a lot of mental effort. All right. All right. Moving on. We'll learn a few more derivatives of like uh, so-called hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine, and also the inverse derivatives, derivatives of the inverse trig functions this week. Because I know not all of you have seen that in calculus one, so we'll be covering that later this week. All right. Moving on. Differentiation rules. Well, differentiation rules, there's just a few, really. Um, linearity, right? I mean, there's the sum rule. There's the homogeneity. I can pull out a constant. There's the product rule, you know. Um, I've written the DDX, the operator notation. You could also express this as FG quantity prime is F prime G plus FG prime. That would be fine. Um, here's the quotient rule, of course. We love the quotient rule. And the dreaded chain rule, which you must know. Um, without flinching. We will use that. Maybe not every day, but many days. Anyway, so here's some examples that you should be able to just do, you know, without too much difficulty. You should be able to do these derivatives. If I was to ask you a quiz on these soon, like, it shouldn't be a bad quiz. It should be like, yes, please, sir, may I have another? I like these. These are fun. It's differentiation. Everybody can do it. Well, Everybody who's been taught correctly should be able to do it. 
if you've been taught five years ago and your Calculus 1 is rusty but you've got credit for it, well, that's unfortunate because we're going to use Calculus 1. You know, these prerequisites we have in math, <laughs> they're not idle threats. They're necessities of our existence. All right. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so there's a little bit on differentiation. Sorry, I'll just try to, try to stop the threats. I know it's the first day. Um, well, I, I mean, well, anyway. Trying not to say too much about Trump right now. All right, so elementary integrals. Um, that's the next thing, right, after you've done differentiation. Of course, you did some other stuff like related rates, and you studied graphing, you did optimization, you did all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, we'll get to that soon enough. All right, that comes up in the homework sets. There's lots of homeworks that um, pick back up on those applications of Calculus 1 here and there. But I'm really just trying to focus on the calculational core of Calculus 1 right now, right? This is not a complete representation of what you should know. It's just some of the bare essentials. All right, so elementary integrals you should know about, like, of course, if we have this indefinite integral, that means that if I differentiate the antiderivative, the big F, I should get back the little f, which we call the integrand. This, basically, this guides how we do integration to start with, right? We look for something that if we differentiate it, we get back to where we started. That's, that's the, the starting point. So here's your elementary antiderivatives, or your elementary indefinite integrals. The derivative of the power function is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Of course, that assumes x n is not equal to minus 1. n equals to minus 1 gives us division by 0. Not usually a good thing. Um, derivative of, I mean, excuse me, integral of 1 over x, natural of the absolute value of x. Absolute value, you could write a formula, square root of x squared. The absolute value is, like, um, it's important. <laughs> not writing it there will make you get certain problems wrong. I do have a certain proclivity for testing on that. Um, the integral of e to the x is e to the x plus a constant. Um, very exciting, um, but important. All right. Integral of sine is minus cosine. Notice the, um, this, the SIGN, the sine, is different than it was with the derivative, of course. Dri integral of cosine is sine. <clears throat> integral of secant squared tangent. Integral of secant tangent is secant. Integral of cosecant is minus cotangent. Integral of cosecant cotangent is minus cosecant. The integral of a to the x dx is 1 over the natural log of a um, times a to the x plus a constant. You'll notice that in each one of these integrals I've written dx, 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 dx. <gasps> Oh my goodness, goodness gracious, take off a point, make me go stand in the corner or something. It is absolutely not allowed to not write that dx. I am a stickler for this kinds of notation because these kinds of notation keeps us on straight and narrow. Um, all right, anyway, so, you know, if I use a notation, you're like, wow, he's writing more than he needs to. Um, well, probably I want you to do it too. There's probably a good reason for it, but anyway. All right, again, I'm trying not to talk too much about notation this first day. All right, anyway, so you must know these, right? These are the fundamental integrations that you must know. If you don't know these by heart, you're making yourself work in every single day for about three weeks. All right, well, and then, and then life past that, but anyway, I go on. All right, so the big ideas of integration up next here, you got your FTC one. If you differentiate an integral with a variable bound, you get the function popping back out, all right? This comes up in weird applications like the Fresnel, um, like optics. There's like this sine integral function. It, it comes up here and there. It actually, there are applications that use that, believe it or not. Fundamental theorem of calculus part two, of course, is the big idea. Um, this is just bizarre that this signed area should be connected to the difference of these antiderivatives. Like that is just, this is just a totally weird theorem. But this is why we study calculus, really. This thing right here is the most important thing I've said so far. Um, mathematically at least. It's very, very interesting. Anyway, we can use it. And then there's FTC part three, which probably wasn't called that in your course, but it's just my silly um, sort of combination of these two plus the chain rule. Um, if you have variable bounds, then you have to multiply by the derivative of the variable bound. And it's sort of like a, it's a play on calculus of FTC one and FCC two. There's a certain subclass of evil homework problems we assign home calculus one students, it makes them cry, but they're all FTC three. I don't know, it's not that interesting. I don't know why I put it on here. I'm sorry. I'm getting off track. And then, of course, what did you get to? I really do hope you got the U substitution. If you didn't, that's too bad, because we assume you did. Of course, we will be doing U substitutions implicitly in the other things, but it's not something we're going to stop and study separately. For here's a typical U substitution. Uh, integral of e to the x squared x times dx. So you go, ah, oh, most complicated thing here is e to the x 
I mean, it's the exponential function, so I'll make u equal to x squared. When I do that, I take the differential, I get du is 2x dx. I solve for what I have here, which is x dx, right? See that? There's different ways of implementing the substitution, but I did. I said, ah, x dx, so I'm going to solve for x dx. And so when I do that, then I can plug in du over 2 up here, and then I have integral of e to the u, which is 1 half e to the u plus a constant, and then I switch back to x at the end, and there's your answer. Now, I hope you've done dozens of these things. I, I really hope you have. Um, if you haven't, it's not too late. There's still time. Um, you should go back and practice them, right? I will help you um, if you have specific questions about things. Uh, anyway, that's about all I have to tell you. Um, Tuesday, we'll start in section 7.7, .7, which is on, what's it on? Inverse trig functions. And um, I'll try to have the homework list and syllabus and stuff like that up posted up here pretty soon. But uh, it's pretty simple. We meet, we talk about calculus, you do your homework ask good questions, and you should do well. Well, that's my dream. But anyway, I hope to actually meet you. This is very bizarre. I'm sorry about this, but it is what it is. Thanks, guys.